This is going to be a quick video showing you how to make flag style effects inside Adobe Illustrator, including text. And the font I'm using, if you want to recreate what I'm doing quite exactly, is called Dubtronic Solid. I will place a link to download this font in the description of the video in case you want to download that and do the exact same thing. But this will work the exact same with any font you want to, or any image or silhouette or other vector illustration inside the flag that you want to. So totally up to you. And also it'll be helpful if you have your properties window open and ready to go as we do this. So if you don't see a properties window, just go to window in the top menu. And from that top menu, go to properties, which is about two thirds of the way down. If you see a checkbox, it's on your screen. If not, just click it and it will show up. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get your text ready to go that you're going to use for your flag. In this case, I'm very creative and my text says flag, but have it say whatever you want to say. And you can type out either one line or multiple lines, totally up to you, depending on how you want this to look. So I'll just recreate my example quite closely with four of the flags. And then you'll notice that the spacing in this text is quite wide between the baselines of each font. So if you want to fix that in your properties window, there's a section for letting, which will look like an A with an A below it, and then a line pointing up and down between the baselines. If you just click and hold the down arrow, it'll shrink the letting, which will then tighten that gap up a little bit to bring your text a little bit closer together. So that's just a stylistic choice that you can make. And then once your text is ready to go, you can just go over to your toolbar and select the rectangle tool. Alternatively, you can hit M on your keyboard to select the rectangle tool. And when that rectangle tool is selected, just click hold and draw a box around your text, trying to make it look pretty close to how you think your flag around your text should look in terms of the spacing around it. And when you're done, just let go. And then the follow-up step is now this box is actually covering over the text, which isn't what you want. You want the box behind it. So you want to right click or control click if you don't have a right click button and then go to arrange. And from arrange, you want to send to back. And now because the text is black, you can't see it in front of the box, but it is there. So I'm just going to click on the text that's now in front and double click on the fill in order to change the color. I'm going to change this color to be white. You can change it to be whatever color it is you want it to be. And from this point, you can then also readjust the overall size of the box behind it to make it look the way that you want it to look for the flag that you're trying to make. And also if it's helpful, to arrange your text perfectly in the center of your box, you can click on the text and then right click or control click. And this time go to create outlines, which will make the text outlined. And why I did that is because it draws a perfect bounding box on the very edges of the text, where if you have the text still in editable form, that bounding box extends a bit differently. It doesn't tend to be exactly around it in a perfect square. So it was just making it a perfect square because then you can use the direct selection tool or the black arrow to click, hold, and drag around this entire thing. And then the properties window, there's an align section. You just wanna hit the first one, which is horizontal align center. And then the second one, which is vertical align center. And that'll perfectly make your text in the exact center of the square shape that you created. And then what I did on this example is I have actually a gradient effect, which I just think looks neat on a flag. So if you want to create your own gradient effect, what's helpful is if you have your start color and your end color already drawn out in a square, or I guess two squares, to essentially act as swatches, which you will then use to copy the colors over to the gradient. So if you wanna pause this and do that right now, or just do it as I talk, feel free to do so. And then to apply the gradient effect to the square or rectangle that will serve as your flag, just click on that. And then over in your toolbar below where the fill and the swatch are, there's three different boxes below that with the middle one being gradient. You want to click that, which will apply a gradient to the box that you created. And then from that, a window should also open up for the gradient window. So on this box, there is a color on the far left and a color on the far right. If you click on that twice, it'll open up a menu where you can either use this color swatch picker to pick swatches, you can click on this color palette, which will give you another way of going in here and having a lot of various options for those colors. But if you want an exact color, I tend to just use this color picker or the eyedropper. I click that, and then I just click on a swatch that I have saved on my screen 
to very quickly copy that color over. And then I'll do the exact same thing on this color swatch on the right. So I double click that, go to the color picker, and then just pick the secondary color. And then I can just go over to my selection tool or the black arrow, click that and kind of click off this to no longer be inside the gradient tool. So a really fast way to create gradients inside Illustrator in case this is an effect that you like. But now we're actually almost done. So using that black arrow or the selection tool, you just want to click, hold, and drag over both the box and your type again. And this time you're going to hit control G on a PC or command G on a Mac to group these together. And when you group objects together and then place an effect on them, it treats it as a single object instead of two separate objects. So that way the effect always looks good and it doesn't distort between multiple objects. So that's the reason why we're grouping this. And then back over to the properties window in the appearance section, there's an FX button, which is for choosing an effect. You want to click that and then go to warp. And then from warp, you want to go to flag, which will bring up this warp options. And you want to make sure the preview box is checked so you can see what's actually happening here as you adjust this. Right now, this warp is way too extreme, but basically all you have to worry about is the bend aspect of this warp, where you can either make it negative, which has the high point of the flag on the left side, or positive, which makes the high point of the flag on the right side. When you have that looking the way you want it to look, you can hit OK, and then you're done. You're actually pretty good to go from there. And of course, if you want to change how this looks later on, you just click on your object and then back to the properties window. And under the appearance section, you can click on warp flag, which will open that back up. And then you can adjust this and make any changes you want to, or you can even select different effects. For example, if you don't want a flag, but you want a rise, which is very similar, you can click on that and then go ahead and create a rise effect. So it's really fast to go in here and do this without too much work at all. And if you want to remove that effect, there's a little trash can icon in the properties window, which you can click and that'll remove it. So you can go ahead and do something else from that point. But that's really all that I have for this video. The cool thing about working this way is that it's not just for creating that flag effect, but this actually works for all of the different effects that are in the effects option right here. So feel free to play with those in the warp section and see how things look. This is also a really great way to make banners. If you use the arc option, in this case, it doesn't look too good because banners aren't typically almost a perfect square, but that is one way to go in there and do that. So anyways, if you did find this video to be helpful for you, feel free to hit the thumbs up button to like the video and let me know that it was helpful to you. And also if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section. And of course, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing. I'll do my best to keep creating new content just like this. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.